at the first, I want to ask you our traditional question. Okay. Of course, um, no one forced you to accept Islam. Of course. We want you to tell us about the, go the conversations you made with yourself, with yourself, in your inner mirror, until you declared the Shahada. There is no God but Allah, and the Muhammad is a messenger from Allah. We want you to tell us about your autobiography from the beginning. We are listening. Well, this question is like uh, you hit me with a sledgehammer right from the beginning, huh? <laughs> um, well, from the beginning, uh, the best place to start, I guess, uh, which most people find interesting, uh, is a dream that actually I had as a very small child. Uh, when dream? I a dream. When yeah. I was maybe four or five years old, I had a dream that there was a person, uh, and I felt like he was a very holy person, uh, sitting on a camel in mm. the desert and he had three or four of his followers around him and he was talking to me and I could never remember what he said and I had this dream maybe three nights or four nights in a row and uh, woke up and you know I could never remember what he said but I would always tell my mother about you know I saw this person in this dream and you know you made conversations er with him right yeah exactly mm. and uh, so I guess you could say, f since I was very young, my, what we would say, my spiritual eye was open. Mm. So I was always somebody who became, was very interested in religion from a very young age. And of course, uh, I was raised in a Christian society, so I read the, the Bible, uh, I believed in it, and uh, found a lot of comfort, really, actually, reading it. Um, but at the same time, you feel fear. You feel afraid that there's so many religions, how do I know that this is correct? So what I was searching for really was two things. Uh, I was searching for what, what we call yaqeen, certainty, mm. as well as peace and something that would make me feel really very calm, uh, very, uh, you know, at peace with myself and feel comfortable in what I believed. And so then I began to study all religions. Uh, I bought a book on world religions and read it. And uh, really, I was searching. And as part of my searching, part of my working out the, the issues I was having, uh, I would actually, it's kind of a funny story, I would uh, kind of play like a practical joke on people in my school. And I would tell them that I converted to any religion just to make a joke with them. And then after two weeks or three weeks, I would uh, tell them it was just a joke and, you know, haha, I fooled you, you know. Mm. And, and so uh, I had a friend that was kind of an accomplice in this, and he said to me one day, he said, why don't you become Muslim for a few weeks, you know, as a joke? This will be funny, you know, no one will believe that. And so I said, sure, why not? You know, I'll be Muslim. And you have to remember, at the same time, I was searching. I was searching for the truth, for yaqeen. And this was one of my ways of working this issue out. Uh, because people would ask you questions, and you would have to find the answer. You know, they would say, oh, so you're a Hindu this week. Well, what do Hindus believe, you know? So that you would have to find it. And they did the same thing with Islam. So you're a Muslim, what do you believe, you know? So I would do the research, and when they would ask me the questions, and after about two weeks, I was convinced. It never got to the point where I told two them... Two weeks? After two weeks. It never got to the point where I told them it was just a joke. You know, I was ready to become Muslim at that point. So. I, mean, I want to ask you... One more question. Okay. In your opinion, what is the complete meaning of Islam? Well, it's not just one thing, really. It's not uh, one answer that I can give. It's something that uh, it starts with a simple belief that you find is very encompassing, actually. It uh, means a lot of things. For example, uh, it's not uncommon to hear of uh, any scholar who writes... 20 pages just about Surah Al-Ikhlas, you know, just four verses from Quran. But yet you find Surah Al-Ikhlas is very simple in its mm. meaning. But it's something that is simple, but it covers so many things. So Islam is something that it's very basic. It's applicable to anyone. Anyone can understand it. But it's also something that is very deep, something that's very heavy. 
and that can affect people on several different levels whether we're speaking about uh, mentally uh, psychologically logically rationally or spiritually uh, in matters of the heart and and so on so uh, it's it's a very big uh, religion like an ocean mm -hmm. what's your impressions when you are listening to Quran recited by others the Quran is something that I play it in my house constantly because it's something that it's like a natural uh, sedative it makes you feel so calm and it makes me feel very secure and it uh, it has a purifying effect on the soul which you can recognize immediately it's something that uh, no, no Muslim actually has an excuse to have a bad day or to have any bad feeling inside himself because the Quran you, you can listen to Quran or recite Quran and have that uh, calming effect on your soul take that time out to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is something that is very special it's a very special thing about our religion mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I want to ask you one more question how could Quran help you seeking the right path through its simplicity is one way through the uh, just the how simple the message ac actually is the message of Tawheed uh, mm. is is enough for anyone to grasp but on the same time uh, at the same time if someone is seeking a something very profound uh, you have it through the study of uh, you know the names of Allah his attributes and his power and, and all of these things through the character of the Prophet salam, you know so all of these uh, things are there for anybody who who seeks it so it's it's a it's an encompassing religion that's for everybody mm -hmm. you want to reply yeah um, uh, I'll rephrase the question a little bit instead of saying what's the worst thing uh, I see from Muslims let's instead ask the question what is something that for, as an objective observer from perhaps another angle because as a Muslim convert or revert I see things differently uh, than someone who's born in Islam so let's ask instead what's something that I feel from viewing it from my uh, angle that Muslims need to work on in my opinion and uh, you know Allah alam but it's my opinion that Muslims uh, need to work on beautifying their souls this is something very important uh, actually a lot of Muslims forget that the first masjid in Islam was not the masjid in Medina it was actually a very small masjid that if you saw it you wouldn't recognize it because the first Muslims were not interested in you know having everything beautif beautified on the outside they were working very hard to beautify their inner soul to purify their heart and to make their inside beautiful because an inner change brings out outer results and that's a fact uh, so this is the answer to the question from my angle that we need to examine ourselves and instead of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when his justice or mercy will come uh, we have no right really to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where is he but he has every right to ask us where are we where are you at and this is something I've heard uh, many Muslim scholars ask uh, and we need to pay attention to that question Jazakallah khairan in one minute uh, in your opinion in what way you can serve Islam in the future by uh, again this is my opinion but by working on myself because uh, I think it's very important that that what we say in English we say like begets like in other words as you are that's what you will produce and that's what you will attract and so I think if we can work as Muslims and me especially can work on uh, you know the nafs work on the ego and uh, work on getting rid of anger and envy and you know all of these things relying on other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we can work on that and you change yourself you will see that the people around you start to change and you'll see the circumstances start to